All right, Shalom, giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakodash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone, peace and salutations unto the Akiam, the brothers pushing this truth through the four corners of the earth in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and the freedom to do so now more so than ever to the scattered, speckable Israelites who be scattered among the heathen. I say Shalom. And I say shalom unto the few mm -hmm. unfaithful aqua, the sisters listening and learning. This is your brother Yerushalam from the GMS Prophetic Vibrations Camp of the Trinidad and Tobago coming at you with another video through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai Bashem Rakakudash. Now this video will be entitled There's Only One Way to God, right? And it's not true Abrahamic religions. Okay? You know, and, and this um video will be centered around this article showing the Pope visiting the ancient city of Ur, right? Because um, Abraham would have come from the city of Ur, right? You know? And, um, you know, it's so funny that, you know, this, this, this devil, you know, this, this devil, you know, who, who, who basically put, set himself up, you know, they set themselves up as, as the leader of his, of his so-called Church of the Lord, the, the, the universal Church of the Lord, because that's what Catholic means, all right? You know, and deceiving many. Alright, so we're going to go through this article here, and we're going to hit some precepts to debunk, to debunk this, these wicked, um, these wicked religions, alright, okay, and show you the truth, what is it, was it true faith or the true religion, alright, you know, because it's, it's, it's definitely only one way to God, only one way, alright, not two ways, not three ways, not four ways, alright, contrary to popular belief. So let's read this here. Pope to visit ancient city of Ur, the cradle of civilization. Francis expected to visit the southern Iraqi city of Ur, you know, which is Babylon, right? Ancient Babylon, on Saturday, where the father of all three Abrahamic faiths is believed to have born to be to have been born. Alright? It is where the wheel was invented. Alright, um, blah blah blah. I'm not gonna read through that. Alright. Um, this is just history. I'll put up a link to this um to this um article here, which is from Al Jazeera, by the way. All right, March the fifth, twenty twenty one. Put this up on the um description box. It says um, the pontiff is expected to host an interreligious meeting in U on Saturday. So what, what what if 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 you are the leader of um the so called true faith and you. Christians, right? Why? What are you doing holding an interreligious meeting? You know, aren't you just the leader of the Christians or the Roman Catholics? So why are you holding an interreligious meeting? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. You know, to hold an interreligious meeting, that means you have to be united with them, with the rest of religions, all right? Because the Lord basically, Lord definitely, ain't about um, ain't about um, being together with these rest of heathens or these other faiths. Alright, because there's only one faith. So it's a lie. So all this is a lie, right? Um, Christianity, Roman Catholicism, a big fat lie from the devil, right? You know who is who is the so-called white man, right? You know the red man, Esau Edom. Alright? A life of luxury. Ur is one of several cities built in by the Sumerians. Alright, so we know that was built by the Sumerians. They say um um when they settled in southern Iraq around 3500 BC. All right, going down here. All right, um, and this is ironic. To Sumerian society, recognized the mother's leadership role in the family. The woman commanded a high level of of respect. You know, and and if and it makes sense because you know, mod is the same thing in modern day Babylon, right? You know what the scriptures say. You know, a woman shall compass a man. Alright, so everything that the church stands for, the, uh, the Roman Catholic Church are talking about, you know, it's um, pretty much in these, um, it's part of these religions, it's part of, their, it's part of their beliefs of ancient Babylon. Because they built, they built everything on ancient Babylon, right? It was all built on ancient Babylon. Jeremiah 30. To the 
the 122 Yeah, Jeremiah 31 and 22 says, How long will thou go about, O backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in earth, a woman shall compass a man. So, and from the beginning it wasn't like that. You know, because when they go back to Genesis, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16, you know, it doesn't say that, you know, because the way the Lord meant it to be was that um, a woman should be ruled over by her husband. This is Genesis 3 and 16. It says, Unto the woman I said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, and thy conception in the sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Alright, so you see clear here now the relation between ancient Babylon and modern day Babylon, which is America. Right? Babylon the Great. You know, it's the same thing. You know, so it's, it's no wonder why um this false prophet, you know, this Pope is going back to these place places, right? You know, because they have ev everything they stand for, you know, ancient Babylon stood for. Alright? They just perfected in a wicked way. Alright. Um, so the Sumerians were interested in building temples with modern asphalt, pagan temples, that is. Alright. You know. Jumping on here, the complex next to Ziggurat is said to be date back to about 1900 BC and at one time was the home of the prophet Ibrahim, known as Abraham by Christians and Jews. Alright. Emer Abdul Razak. Head of the Nasiraya um, Civilization Museum explained why Ur is considered so important to Christians, Jews, and Muslims. Ur is the birthplace of the prophet Ibrahim, and this is mentioned in the Torah and the Gospels. And for this reason, all religions consider him their spiritual father. All right, you know, and you know, the Lord not dealing with religion, not the religion. The Lord said in Jeremiah 17 and 4, uh, you know, He said it. Let me get, let me get that. Jeremiah 17 and verse 4 He said, And thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not, for you have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. So we just shall discontinue from my heritage. He gave us a heritage. Alright? Only Israel. Alright? So they they fully offer this. You know, because they don't believe in the same thing we believe. Or, you know what the Lord said? You know, you know what the Lord said in the, book, in the book of Ephesians. He said it has one Lord, one faith, one baptism. All right, that's the book of Ephesians, chapter 4 and verse 5. It says, One faith. All right, Let me read from verse, from verse 4, Ephesians 4 and 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, all right, not Muhammad. All right. Not Krishna or whoever else. One Lord, one faith, one faith, eh? right? So no, not Muslim Christianity, as they call it, plantation Christianity, and the Jewish religion. I say ish because it's not in the Israelite tradition or the Israelite heritage, right? One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one the one God, Yahweh Hashem, Yahshua, and Father of all, who is above all. So not Allah. You know, not Shiva, you know, not Buddha, alright? One God, one and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all, alright? So, they, they, they certainly off, you know, plus, plus if you go back, you know, the scripture says clearly that um, not all the seed of Abraham and chosen ones. So, let's get that. It's the book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 3, it says, for I wish that myself were cursed from your Mashiach, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So it's only Israel. It's because Paul was writing this. Alright? You know, my according to the flesh, who are Israelites. Alright, so this is who he's talking to. Not everybody. Alright? Not everybody. So where did they get that doctrine from? Certainly not from the scriptures. Alright? You know? Mark 7 and 7 say, say basically, you know, how be it basically in roughly paraphrasing that they go about preaching the, the doctrines of, of men, the traditions of men. Alright? The traditions of men. So, um, who are Israelites to whom what's in it, the adoption. So we only, only us have the adoption and the glory 
and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of the Most High and the promises. All right, so it's only to Israel these were given. Whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, the Hamashiach, that's the Hawashai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, came. Who is over all, the Most High, blessed forever. Amen. All right? Not as though the word of the Most High have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. So not all Israelites even gonna, gonna get this. So far more the heathen. You know who who these Ishmaelites, these Muslims who say that they know they, they want a, one part of the covenant too. It's not for them. Alright? It's not for you, Amalekites. You know, you're you all fake Jews. Alright? You are fake Jews according to Revelation 2 and 9 and Revelation 3 and 9. Alright? For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. So you hear this part. And that's the part that's hitting the nail on the head right here. Verse 7. Neither, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So it's only that, that particular lineage that God, the Most High, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, you know, who he chose to Isaac shall thy seed be called. You know, that's why he told me, he basically allowed Ishmael to go his way. You know, through, and that happened through his wife Sarah. You know, because the Lord told Abraham to listen to his wife and, and send, send Hagar and her son away. Because they, they didn't have the promise. Alright? Same way all these other Abrahamic religions don't have the truth. Alright? So um, verse 8 says, That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of the Most High. You know, so they are not the children of the Most High, only Israel. So, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Alright? For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, alright, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High according to election might stand. So the Lord makes his choice by election. Who he elects? So this is predestination and this is Israel. It's only for Israel. Alright? According to the election might stand, not of works, but of him that call it. Right? It is. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. So that was the prophecy that she received. Alright? Rebecca received that prophecy. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated, and I get in Malachi 1, right? From verse 1 going down to verse 4. Alright? Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So the Lord hates Esau. So why they don't talk about that, Pope? Alright? What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? The Most High forbid. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai forbid. For he saith unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of the Most High that showeth mercy. Alright, so the Lord is the one who show mercy. So hey, I mean, not all is not just because they come from Abraham doesn't mean hey, you have the promise. No. Right, let's go to let's go to Galatians chapter 4 and verse 21. It reads, Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? So all you that talk about the Muslims, talk about the Torah, alright? You, you know, you don't hear what the law says? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid and the other by a free woman. But he who was born of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. So this, this ain't for you, this ain't for you Ishmaelites, alright? You have a lot of Jake who is Islamic religion too. And Islam is not for you. Okay? But he who was of the born woman was born after the flesh. Right? But he of the free woman was of was by the promise. So we you know, Lord well, when we as Israelites, we have that promise. Alright? We had the covenants. Alright? And that's just the facts. Nothing they could do about that. Alright? Um we can see that. Let's jump to Psalms because we're going to illustrate this here. Psalms chapter 147 and verse 19. It says, He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. All right? All right so the Lord said, He never dealt so with any nation. And guess what? The Lord don't change. So if the Lord don't change, 
we all get our doctrine from. Alright? Where you got a doctrine from? That's wickedness. <clears throat> Alright. Let's go to Malachi 3 and 6. Because the Lord don't change. It's book of Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. For I am the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And that's the name of the Lord right there. You know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. This, this Yehovah is Yahweh. It's really Yahweh. Alright? Because it doesn't have any E's or O's in the Hebrew. Not any V's. Right? So it's Yahweh. For I am the Yahweh. Right? I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So the Lord doesn't change. So the Lord, the Lord set up Israel as his people. And he's not going to change from that. Alright? Right? He had not dealt so with any nation. Psalm 147 and 20. He have not dealt so with any nation as for his judgment, they have not known them. So none of all you know that. Alright? You Pope you are an Edomite. Alright? Pope Francis is an Edomite. He's not an Israelite. Alright? He has no adoption. He has no promise. He has nothing. He's a devil. Alright? So go back to um, and you know and 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 you know the devil isn't that's what people honestly serpent and the devil. You know it's not no no man with no red man with a pitch for it's a red man, yes. He is Esau Edom is red. The word um for Esau in the Edom in the um Hebrew, the Paleo Hebrew is Adawam, which means red. He is red. But he ain't got no tail and no pitchfork, you know, and that's not the spiritual angel Lucifer. Right? Satan meaning adversary, they are our adversaries, our enemies, according to Psalms 83. Alright? So 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 um it's a man. You know, that's why in Revelation 2 and 10 he said the devil shall cast some of you into prison. You no, know, the spiritual angel Lucifer ain't gonna do that. That's a that's a man. You know, that's the son of perdition, according to Second Thessalonians two and three going down there. The son of perdition being revealed in this time, all right, being made manifest, can't hide anymore, all right. Lord, the Lord is lifting up his skirts. He's revealing his secrets, all right. You know, Job nine and twenty four. You know, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He cover the faces of the judges thereof. If not, who, who, who is he? You know, roughly paraphrasing, it's Esau Edom, the so-called white man. All right, you know, and that's what that's that's what's going on here. Let's cut back to that article here. Um. So um, yeah, he said they consider him their spiritual father. All right, therefore visiting the land of his birth is considered one of the most important religious rites. You know, and the word religion comes from a word that means divide to divide and conquer so they have all these different religions uh, you know which Sosa they supposedly they want to bring together under the Pope right as the head you know so Pope Francis historic visit aims to boost the morale of Iraq's besieged Christian minority which has dwindled in recent years amid wars and persecution and to encourage religious coexistence between Muslims Christians and other minorities you know, and Yahweh Shai wouldn't preach that. The politicians need to promote the spirit of fraternal solidarity. Alright? That's what the pontiff said. First of all, let's look at the word pontiff and what that means. Alright? Let's look at the word pontiff. Etymology Online Dictionary. And etym, etym means um, truth. Right, and all is the study of the study is the study of truth, the true meaning or the root meaning of the word. You have pontiff here, um, it means high priest from French pontiff, uh, title of a Roman high priest. So, this is a Roman high priest, and the Romans were pagans. All right, that's where this thing come from, you know, because they mixed they mixed the true, the true doctrine with the paganism, right, pontificate. You know, to assume pompous and dignified airs, issue dogmatic decrees, you know, in a pompous or dogmatic way. That's where it comes from. So there's nothing good. Alright? You say nothing good. He not have that Pope and got nothing good for you. There you go, pontiff. What does pontiff mean in Latin? Um ponti pontiff. Was, was in Roman antiquity a member of the most illustrious of the colleges of priests of the Roman religion. Alright? 
of the Roman religion. It doesn't talk about, if you talk about Roman Catholic, Roman religion. That's where they got this nonsense from. Alright? So he's a high priest of the of paganism. Alright? Um, and what he wanted to promote the spirit of fraternal solidarity. What does fraternal mean? Alright? We go into the word fraternal. Um, fraternal showing a special friendliness to other people because they share interests or ideas with them you know and they have they have common interests it's true these so-called abrahamic religions have common interests you know they're not the truth all right they're not the truth you know of or relating relating or, or involving brothers fraternal love relating to or being a fraternal or society you know um, jumping down and saying um, friendly, brotherly, there was fraternal feeling among troops, you know but the Lord ain't about that the Lord separated the nations, you know and he separated his people Israel to be a special possession, so Israelites not supposed to be fraternal with anybody alright, and he go into the word solidarity it means a unity solidarity it means a unity of agreement or feeling of action Especially among individuals with a common interest. Mutual support within our group so they have a common interest. Right? You know, all these religions have a common interest. And basically, part of the common interest, you know, is, is to be against Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Right? To be against his people. Right? That's the common interest they have. And wickedness. You know, doing things that are against the laws of the Lord. It says Romans 3 and verse 1. It says, Hear this word that Yahweh had spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. You know, only Israel. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquity. So the Lord said, He's only known Israel. And we read through uh, Malachi 3 and 6. It said, The Lord don't change. So He only knows Israel. Right? Verse 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed? So how the hell, you know, Muslims could walk together with, with Christians, so-called Christians walk together with so-called Jewish, right? How could we, as Hebrew Israelites, walk together with these heathens? It, it, it doesn't make sense. We're not part of them, all right? As the scripture said, the heathen is nothing, all right? And Israel is everything. You know, and as plain as, it's just plain so. You know, but these devils had this doctrine of our long ways back. They've been doing this stuff. They've been planning this and, and, and orchestrating this, these heathens, for a long time, for centuries. Okay? For thousands of years. When you go back to um, 1 Maccabees, chapter 1, and verse 40, 41 thereabout, you know, this wicked king, Antiochus, right? Moreover, 1 Maccabees 1 and 41 says, Moreover, king Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. So you see where they get this one thing from, one world order. You know, they get it. It's not now. All right? It's not now. You know, it's been happening a long time. All right? They've been trying to do this all the time for centuries. And everyone shall leave his laws. And so all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Everybody left the laws, including Israel. A lot of Israelites, just like today, they left the laws of the Most High and fallen after the ways of the heathen. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. Right? This religion is what? This wicked religion that this Pope bringing, this Roman Catholic religion, and these other Muslim and Jewish religions, right? Many, yea, many also of the Israelites consented to this religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. Alright? For the king had sent letters by messengers into Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. Right? You know, and he forbid us from following the ways of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Alright? And, and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days and pollute the sanctuary and holy people that way, that way he's doing and that's what this Pope is doing right now alright set up altars and groves 
and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. Right? Everything that they everything that they did back then, they do it now. It's nothing new under the sun. Right? There's nothing new under the sun. They go back to the book of Ecclesiastes. It says that there's nothing new under the sun. Alright? It's nothing new under the sun. So let's go to another precept here. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 17. You know, because the Lord coming back to destroy them. Alright, first let me read from verse 15. Because this is your Hawa Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Alright, and he's coming back to destroy, not for peace. Alright? Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, the Lord, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And these chariots are the so-called UFOs. Alright? For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens, right? And gardens is those churches, those wicked churches, behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Alright? So the Lord is going to destroy them, right? All of you. For I know their works and their thoughts, it shall come, that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And that's going to happen in the valley of Jehoshaphat, or the valley of Yahweh Shapat, which is Yahweh's judgment. When Yahweh Shai comes and he destroys all these wicked heathen and Jake among with them, who, 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 who among them? Two thirds of his own people will die, according to Zechariah 13 and 8. Okay? So that's what's, that's what's coming to you if you don't turn away from these wicked religions. Okay? Death and destruction. Alright? As it said in Jeremiah chapter 15, alright? Four types of death. Okay? You can go and take a read of those. Okay? That's what's waiting for you. Okay? That's what's waiting for you. Isaiah 65 and verse 3. You know. Um, I am verse 65. Isaiah 65 and 1. It reads, I am sought of them that ask not for me. Alright? I am found of them that sought me not. Alright? I said, Behold me. Behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. You know? You know, and all, these, all them ones are, all these heathens want to have our, our, our um, covenants, our promises. But it's not for them. Right? I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people who walk it in a way that was not good. After their own thoughts. Right? After their own thoughts. Right? Because there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end result is death. Proverbs 14 and 12. Now let's get that right here. Book of Proverbs, chapter 14 and verse 12. It reads, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So all them who to believe that, you know, following Roman Catholicism, plantation Christianity, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, that's the way to the Most High. You know, they're wrong. It seems right to them, but the way are the ways of death, right? Because the Lord have you blinded, all right? You have, to, you have to pray that you come out of that. Lord have you blinded, all right? He blind them, all right? And so Nilek is going to wake up and see this truth, all right? This is Isaiah 65, all right? And verse 2, let me read it over. I have spread out my hands all day unto rebellious people, which walk it in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. So there's a way that seemed, that seemed right unto the man. But you know, it resulted in death. Proverbs 14 and 12. Alright? It's roughly paraphrasing. Verse 3. A people that provoke me to anger continually to my face, that sacrifice it in gardens, that's these wicked churches, and burn it incense upon altars of brick. You know? Which is against the laws of the Lord, by the way. Alright? Because then you go back to the book, the word of, and this is a big thing in the Roman Catholic Church. And in all those 
churches because they have the same vibe as Roman Catholic Church. They all bow down to an image of Caesar Borgia. Right? You know that that's what is according to wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 and verse 12 going down there. Alright? You know the Pope, the Pope, the you know, wicked Pope called um, Pope Alexander VI, also known as Rodrigo Borgia, painted an image of his son who they bow down and worship over the, and, and became a we became known as as our Lord, supposedly our Lord, you know, when they changed his name, you know, to Jesus Christ, all right? So it's a whole different image, which is a, which is contrary to the scriptures, Revelation one and fourteen, Daniel ten, verse five, contrary to the description of our Lord, all right, and a different name, which the name is is a powerful thing according to Acts chapter four and verse twelve, all right, Act Proverbs chapter thirty, all right, you know. So it's all a lie, it's all deception. Alright, so you know you don't you don't you're not supposed to sacrifice on brick altars. This Exodus 20 and verse 25. It says, And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. So all these these things, these bricks, they're polluted. Alright? It's polluted. Alright? And, and, and the Lord learning even in those churches in the first place. Because when they go to Isaiah, you know, see so nothing, you're not in no mosque, you're not in no church, you're not in no temple. Alright? You know, your body is the temple of the living God. Alright? And the Lord told us to go out to the highways and byways. That's what he told us to do, to preach this word. It's Isaiah Sirach, Sirach, yeah. It's Acts chapter 7 and verse 48. It reads, How be it the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands. I say at the prophets, all right. He doesn't dwell, you know, in temples made of hands. You know, why would he? Why would he? You know, he's you know, why would he? It's Acts chapter seventeen, and verse twenty-four. It reads, "The Most High that made the world and all things therein, seeing that He is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands." All right. So you don't dwell in no temples made with hands. Alright? In dwell in the, he don't dwell in those temples. Alright? You know? The scripture says what? The scripture says the body is the temple. First Corinthians chapter six and verse fifteen. It reads Know ye not that your bodies are the members of a Yamashiak? Shall I take shall I then take the members of the Yamashiak and make them the members of a harlot? And this is not talking about a literal harlot, this is talking about you know, spiritually, you know, these wicked, these wicked, evil, you know, religions, right? Yahweh forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit, right? Right? He that is joined Lord is one. Flee fornication, you know, and this fornication is spiritual, spiritual. Fornication, they're talking about here. No, no, you know, there's no such thing as 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 fornication with a woman. It's you have adultery, right? A spiritual fornication is worshiping false idols, right? Every sin that a man doeth is without his body, but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body and has bound down to these false gods, right? Verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of the Most High? And ye are not your own? Yeah. Our body is the temple of the living God. Alright? You know, and, and our body wasn't made of hands. Alright? According to the scripture. That's why I say dwell not in, 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 in temples made of hands. You know? Temples built with the hands of men. Alright? But the temple, the temple is this body. That's why the Lord said, if you kill this body, you know, you in three days we'll raise it back up. It wasn't the literal temple. He thought it was the temple. Because carnal men don't understand spiritual things. Alright? Same thing with the tabernacle of David that's being raised up right now. This truth. The Israelites, the men of the Lord, are being raised up in this truth. You know, the tabernacle of King David is being raised up. This is Matthew chapter 16 and verse 15. It reads, And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Mashiach, the son of the living power. And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, 
for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, Thou art, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. All right? And I will give thee unto the keys of heaven, kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound on earth, and whatsoever shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So yea, Peter, and if you could believe it, you know, is King David. All right? In the regeneration. And there's such a thing. All right? And that's another for another lesson. All right? I did a lesson on that. You could check that, you know, because, um, you know, he will, he will build it in the, on his rock. He'll build his church. Which is, which is why he was talking about the tabernacle of King David. You know? You go Amos, chap, Amos chapter 9 and verse 8. All right? It says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. Say it, Lord, again, Jacob, Israel only. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in the sieve, and Israel is scattered to all nations, according to Deuteronomy 28 and 64. All right? Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, right? Which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. So all those who think the Lord not coming to, to, to just kill them with all these plagues that's on the way, that are already here and more on the way, you know, they're going to die by the sword, right? You know, in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David. So this tabernacle of David is the church of the Lord. Which he was talking about in Matthew chapter 16. In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. Alright? And close out the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it on the days of you. And how we build it? Upon that rock. Upon that rock, which is what? It was King, it was it was Peter, who was King David. King David. Alright, this rock. This rock. That is speaking about here. Matthew 16 and 18. I say unto thee, thou that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But this is the tabernacle of King David being built back. Alright? Okay? It being built back. Okay? And King David was here at the foundation level. You know? He was here, all right. So it's clear, all right. This this wicked church. Let me just jump back to that article there. Finish it up. There, um, he reads, there is corruption, abuse of power. That is not that is not the way. At the same time, you need to think of justice, transparency, to to strengthen certain values. That is that is how credibility can grow. So everyone especially young people can have hope for the future and there's no future in this place lord say arise ye and depart micah 2 and 10 for this is not your rest all right and that's it that's about the end there for that for this for this wicked devil you know the, 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 these you know who, who trying to foster peace all right when there's no peace all right trying to foster peace where there's no peace all right Ezekiel 13 and 10. Right? This is Ezekiel 13 and 10. It says, Because even because they have seduced my people, saying peace, and there was no peace, and one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar, which is his wicked doctrines. You know, they're seducing our, they're seducing the Lord people, saying peace, and there was no peace. It have no peace in this place. The Lord didn't come to give any peace. The Lord came to bring a sword. This is Matthew 10 and verse 34. It reads, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am not, I came not to send peace, but a sword. This is what the Lord sent to peace. He's going to send, 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 send a sword. A sword is a divider of people. Alright? Because they're wicked. It will be his people against the wicked. Two thirds of his, of his, his elect. Just one third of his people, 
right? The 144,000 men and the one third, first says the two thirds of his people and the heathen. So there ain't no peace in this place, all right? You know, and plus the Lord said, you know, if you speak according to this, if 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 you do um, if you don't speak, basically according to this word, you know, you know, you you you, you your antichrist spirit, all right? Your antichrist spirit. So let's go to um, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 3 because they believe this priest, this peop, this, these, 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 um, this Roman Catholicism and, and Muslim, they believe in the Immaculate Deception. Right? They didn't say that Mary had the, had the Lord, right? who was the only will ignorant, the Lord Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shia Mashiach, you know, without the seed of a man, right? which is a big fat lie. Alright? Because the Lord came according to the flesh. According to his seed. Alright? And the lineage of King David. Alright? This first John 4 and verse 3. It says, it says, um, fact, let me read from verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit. But try the spirits, whether they be of the most high. Because many false prophets are going out into the world, and he's the biggest false prophet. Okay? That Pope. Alright? Hereby, and we'll get to that just now. Hereby know ye the spirit of the most high. Let me, in fact, let me go there now. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Let's go to Revelation chapter 16. And um, verse, uh, I think it's long, verse 13. Yeah. Alright. So, um, verse 12. And the sixth angel Paul out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, which is dried up right now, by the way. You can go and check it out on the internet. That the way of the kings of the east might be prepared, right? Yeah, those Arabs and those, and those um, the Khamenians, right? The Iraqis, right? The Iranians, Salakia, right? And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, Right? The dragon and the beast is the same. You're talking about NATO and the European Union. Alright? The North Atlantic Treaty Organization and the European Union. That's the beast. That's the dragon. Alright? The great red dragon. And the mouth of the false prophet is talking about mainly about this devil here, right here. This Pope. He's part of that false prophet. He's a big false prophet. Alright? You know? And it is unclean spirits. What they pushing, they pushing this new world order, right? They pushing this um, they push the economic, the economic system, all right? They push, they have the military section, they have the, they have the political section, right? On clean spirits, right? For they are spirits of devils, right? Devils and devil is what he saw, so called white man, working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth. And of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of the Most High Almighty. Yeah, because they gathered them to the great day. Because why? They're trying to unite them. they unite uniting all the nations of the world. And that's what the Lord wants. Right? And He played a big part in this going around. The place trying to unite people and cause peace. Alright? So He's a false prophet. That's like what we see here. You know? Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of the Most High, every spirit that confesseth that the Yahweh Shia Mashiach is come in the flesh is of the Most High. Right? So we know he come in the flesh. He was the seed of a man. Verse 3, and every spirit that confesseth not that Yahweh Shia Mashiach is come in the flesh is not of the Most High. And this and this is that spirit of the Antichrist. Right? Whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now, already, it is in the world. Because they're here in the world. Right? These devils here. You know, and how we, how we just going to try the spirit? You try the spirit by this word. You know? Because as it is written in the book of Isaiah, chapter 8 and verse 20, it says, um, To the law and to the testimony, Isaiah 8 and 20, reading over, To the law and to the testimony, if the, to the law, right? And the testimony. It's how important the laws are. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So this Pope have no light in him. It's only darkness. And so is so all these man-made religions. Alright? All these man-made religions, it's only darkness they have in them. 
Because they don't speak according to the word of the Lord. The true word of the Lord. Right? We just read it in 1 John 4 and verse 3. Right? They are, it's a, and they are antichrist spirits. Okay? You know? And what the Lord said, what the Lord said they like to do. Alright? You know? You know, the Lord said here what they said, my Mark 7 and 6 are the ones who follow this Lord, this lost, this religions, right? He answered and said unto me, Well have I am um, Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites. As, is, as it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How beat in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, for laying aside the commandments of the Most High. So that's what they do when they lay inside the law and statutes of the Most High. You hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. All these different wicked traditions celebrating Easter, Christmas. It's evil and wicked. And the Lord have no part to play with you. With you. Only destruction. So you better come out of her. As the Lord says, Arise ye and depart. Right? Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Right? Micah 2 and 10, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. Anything that is not of the will of the Lord, and of the word of the Lord, is, will, will cause your destruction. I pray that this lesson has been edifying, and give all praises, honor, and glory unto your Hawa Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka Kodash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders who taught us this truth, peace and blessings unto the Akiam, Wa Abad Babal, destruction unto Babylon, Shalom.